Hello there. Happy Wednesday. Thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish, where we make lovely and quirky hand embroidery kits. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 8.30 or that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific uh, PM and uh, it's a time where we can relax and craft here for about an hour and I work all the way through projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process ask your questions along the way and uh, just come and chit chat for a crafty evening here uh, so all right you guys we are continuing on the splendid sampler two. I believe we are working on our 44th out of 100 blocks <laughs> so so we're getting there we're, we're almost halfway I know a lot of you have it done already but I also know a lot of you are just starting uh, so uh, I have been putting the videos for every block uh, the whole process that I've worked on on YouTube at penguin and fish movies so you can check them out there uh, tonight we're gonna continue on the happy willow block uh, it is partially foundation paper pieced and partially normal piece, like just with cut strips in a sewing machine. Uh, so we are working on the foundation paper piecing part of it first. So we got these two, these like two little parts of the willow tree done, or they're not done yet. We have to do the uh, uh, last few pieces on here. I think we have two more to do. Uh, so we started that yesterday. Uh, so that is the plan for tonight. We'll finish that and then I am hoping we can get going on the next part of this as well, which is just some normal piecing that we will put onto this. So I'm stoked. I like this idea of a combination of, of techniques. So we have foundation paper piecing first and then just normal uh, like strip piecing and uh, sewing squares and everything together. So uh, it's a fun little little project and the foundation paper piecing part of it is really easy as well. It is a great starting foundation paper piecing if you have not done that before. Uh, so all right you guys I am going to flip you around and we will get going here this evening. Thanks again for joining me. All right there's old machine there and even older machine here. <laughs> all right here is the happy willow and like I said we have these uh, pieces started and they are really <coughs> excuse me you guys I got some some uh, quilt fuzz in my nose all right these pieces right here are actually only this little tiny section of diagonal lines right there uh, everything else is pieced so we're gonna finish that up first I'm gonna scooch this out of the way oh <laughs> thank you Gretchen Blessings from Atlanta. <laughs> All right, uh, so I have my uh, my postcard ready to go. I need my postcard. I have my add a quarter ruler. Uh, this is that ruler that has that little ledge that's a quarter inch wide. This helps us get us our perfect uh, quarter inch seam allowances as we go along with the foundation paper piecing. Obviously, um, well maybe not so obviously, but you do not need uh, you do not need an add a quarter ruler. It is you can just use a normal, just like any ruler that you can measure a quarter of an inch on. But man, if you're doing a lot of paper piecing, like you will for for this splendid sampler too, this is a nice little splurge. This add a quarter ruler. It is so nice to just measure without thinking. I can measure those quarter inch seam allowances without thinking, and I'll show you. We'll do that coming up here. So all right, we have already pre-cut our next two pieces um, of fabric here. They look a little wrinkled, but I'm not gonna worry about that too much because we'll press them later. Uh, so let's start with the A section. So we have three pieces on here. We have the A1, the A2, and the A3 piece complete. We are now moving on to the A4, uh, the A4 piece. Oh, Tracy, I think we talked about that. I haven't looked at it yet, but Tracy said they have the add a quarter a plus ruler now and I think uh, let me know if I'm wrong but I think that might actually take the place of the postcard like I like the postcard because it's it's non bendy and it, like a but it's super super thin with like a sharp edge and that's what I want to fold 
to fold over. So that's why I like using a postcard, but I think you're right. I think the add a quarter, the new add a quarter rulers kind of have, I'm not quite sure how that works, <laughs> but it has like a sharp edge or something to do this folding, folding with. I haven't checked one of those out yet, so I'll have to do this sometime. Uh, but you, you can already tell that I've colored, uh, I've pre-colored. So when, before we started on this, I colored in uh, the spots so I knew what fabric goes where. So the white is the white fabric and this like salmon colored is, is my tan fabric here. So we're on A4, so that's another salmon colored one. That's our fabric here. So all right, let's prep our piece. We are uh, looking at the line in between A4 and everything that happened before. Uh, and we're gonna ignore what happens later. So A5 is later, we don't care about that. But um, A4 and whatever happened before is right, this is that line right there that divides divides it. So that is, that's what we're going to sew on and that's the line that we're concerned with right now. So I'm going to cover up everything that happened before. So only our A4 is exposed plus whatever happens later. Don't care about that. And I'm going to fold on that line the entire length of the way. So I'm using my postcard as um, my folding device really. Oh, you cleaned out your all the fuzz and lint from your machine, Gretchen. I bet you it's very happy. But all right, when we fold that, then we have the fabric from underneath, our last piece exposed. And this is where our add a quarter ruler comes in. We are gonna cut this to a perfect, a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. And we do that by just bopping this right on. So because of the thickness of the postcard and this fold, it just catches that ridge. I can just bop it on. I don't have to measure. I know that that's a quarter of an inch. Get my cutting glove on. Rotary cutter. Zoop. There we go. That is scrap. And now, no matter what type of blob we had here, we have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Um, so, all right, let's do the uh, let's do the a or the b4 piece right away so this is basically the same thing it's just a mirror image of our first of the a piece so let's fold come on there we go get the add a quarter on there and again the only reason i'm doing both pieces at once is because they're so similar uh if i was working on a foundation paper piecing project that had all crazy shapes and all sorts of different things going on, there's no way I would try and do more than one at once. Once it starts getting confusing, then it's time to, to just simplify to it, do one thing at a time. All right, we have our perfect seam allowances cut. We can fold back the tops. And now we have perfect straight edges uh, which is what we're gonna match up our straight edges of our of our rectangles with. So uh, we're gonna put right sides together. Remember that this is the wrong, the printed side is the wrong side of the fabric and the flip side, that's the right side. So this is hard to tell because it's a very light fabric, but this is actually the right side. I'm gonna flip that and put the two sides together. I'm just kind of guessing. Ultimately we need to cover, we need to cover our B4 piece with our generous seam allowance. Um, and I, th so you want to place, you want to place along the edge here where you think it will cover that. With a rectangle, it's pretty easy to, um, guess at that. Uh, however, if you make a mistake, then you have to tear your paper off and tape it together. So it's better to not make a mistake. And how I do that is by test uh, by testing my position of the fabric. So to do that, I'm going to pretend so along that line. And I pretend so with a couple of pins. So there, I've, I've sewn these two pieces together, pretend sewn along that B4 line um, with the pins. So now I'm going to pretend to press. So I'm going to just finger press it open like that along my pins. And here is where we analyze if we put it in the right spot. So we ask ourselves, does this piece cover that B4 piece plus a generous seam allowance all the way around? And we are totally good. 
uh, we cut nice big pieces for this. Um, so I think we're, we're just totally fine where we're at there. So, all right, so I'm gonna leave the pins there. Uh, we're gonna do the same thing here. This time I won't do the pins, because like I said, with rectangles, it is, it is easier to estimate if you're in the right spot. It's when you have some triangles and some odd shapes that it gets pretty confusing. And, and if that's, if I'm dealing with shapes like that, I pin test every single time. I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it to um, get your piece in the right spot. All right, let's sew. Oh, all right, we are at the machine. Oh, let's get the get my light on. So this is I got those LED lights in my machine now, so my uh, my lamp doesn't get nearly as hot. Oh, I'm gonna take my shoe off. I have a I have a collection of shoes at my feet happening right now because uh, I I keep having to take my shoe off while we sew, and then I forget where the shoes are. So I just have a huge um, not a huge, but I have several pairs of shoes uh, down here. All right, I'm just gonna sew, I guess I don't need these any here anymore. That was for the, that other um, triangle tango quilt that we were using that. All right, uh, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna extend this line into the seam allowance. If a line hits a seam allowance, you wanna extend it into it. Otherwise you wanna stop right on the edge, but both of the beginning and the end of our B4 line here um, goes in the seam allowance. So we're gonna start in the seam allowance and end in the seam allowance. So I'm gonna just uh, do a couple stitches forward and then we'll do a couple stitches backwards. That just kind of locks it in place. And forward again, and I'm sewing right on that line. I'm using a kind of a, a smaller stitch length than usual uh, just because with foundation paper piecing, it's um, good to put, I think at least, uh, some more stitches in in your paper because it's making like perforations in your paper, right? And that'll make it easier to sew later. So this time I didn't chain piece it, I'm doing it one at a time. But there we go. I'm gonna snip the ends off. I like doing that after right away because those will get in your way. All right, so that guy's ready. Let's do the other piece. Get in there, thread. All right, so I'm again, let's just get these edges together. This one I didn't pin. This one I'm guessing that I put in the right spot. Back a couple stitches and forward. I'm pretty excited that this machine has a reverse on it. Um, the old Singer machine that I have from the 20s, I think 27 maybe, uh, that one does not have a reverse. So <laughs> this, this machine so far is easier to use than the Singer for foundation paper piecing. Come on, there we go. I guess I didn't need to put that down. Ugh. All right, let's snip these little ends and uh, then we move on to pressing. You get in a neat little rhythm when you uh, get going on foundation paper piecing and it, it, it becomes, you know, it looks so intricate but it really becomes a relaxing process. This process of um, getting your, your little fabric piece blob ready, you don't even have to measure for that. And then sewing and then ironing, like you just get in this little rhythm. All right, I'm finger pressing it first just to extend. Um, the, see, we're only so, we've only sewn to here. So we have a little flap at the end. I wanna just extend that press line so it extends to that part that we don't have sewn. Then we'll give it a little press. Uh, just a reminder, you always wanna press 
with the uh, printed side down because you don't want to get these print marks on your on your iron. But there we go. That is the the A4 piece in this case, all done. And look, with every new piece, you carve out the shape of the one before. So now we have like this perfect little white white rectangle in there. All right, so let's do this guy. Again, I'm gonna just finger press to extend those lines. I think this is turned off on me. We'll get it back on. This is that cordless iron. I think it's still on mass drop right now. It, or I don't know, or it just finished, but I love it so much. Okay, here we are. So that's our B piece. So we have, um, we have our little, little uh, diagonals going. So if I get rid of the edge, you can kind of start seeing those diagonals happen or just get cleaned up without all these raw edges there. Uh, We'll take, it the, take care of that soon enough, but we have one more piece to go on here first. So, um, Nolene just mentioned uh, some people like folding all of the lines first. I don't like doing it that way. I, I prefer to fold as I go, and the reason for that is I mean, this is just pretty simple. It has some, just a few diagonal lines, but sometimes with foundation paper piecing, you have so many crisscrossy lines and so many folds and stuff happening that I think it just, um, first of all, it confuses me a little bit, like what fold to do. And I think it kind of weakens, like if you have all these folds, it's gonna wanna tear on the fold. And I think this just keeps it a little bit more solid. Um, before before you sew it. So I, I prefer not folding all the lines before getting going. I, I like doing it with the postcard method, like how we're doing it here. So again, let's, um, we'll prep this piece and then we'll get some fabric. So I'm gonna, we're worried about that A5 piece. I'm gonna cover up everything else. So this is when I, when I fold it. I wait till this point to fold. But, a lot of people like folding it first, so you just have to see what works best for you. All right, trim in that quarter inch. We got like a goofy angle here, so this will give us back our perfect quarter inch seam allowance. Uh, and there we go. Lucy, I do not know what number, so my numbers that I use for the Splendid Sampler 2 is different, they're different than the numbers that they use on the Splendid Sampler uh, website. Um, I'm numbering them in the order that I'm working on them in, uh, and that's not the same order that they were released, so... Uh, this is my 44th block but I don't know what number it is in on the on the website unfortunately oh someone someone okay Barbara says that someone posted the numbers on the splendid sampler too okay good so someone someone else had that issue and uh, posted all the numbers that's great okay there we go, our little straight edges. And now we just need to cover this tiny little piece here. So we need a piece of white because it's uh, that white background that represents our white fabric. It needs to be as big as this tiny little B5 plus our generous seam allowance. So we still need that seam allowance. Let's get our white fabric over here. I'm sure there's a little bit that we can trim off from somewhere. Yeah, we'll just get it from here. So uh, it needs to ultimately match with this straight edge. So I like putting the B5 piece on, uh, on the straight edge, like the straight edge of the B5 matching up with a straight edge that we're gonna use. And then I'll just kind of estimate, all right, you know, we need a piece that kind of angles like this. I'm just gonna go like, zoop. <laughs> And this is with the right side down if you're using um, a pattern fabric. 
So I gotta remember, okay, this is the right side down. So when I put right sides together, it's this edge along this line. So we will definitely test, test this. Looks like it's gonna work, um, but we'll just go like that. So again, to, to do that again, um, I'm going to put, you know, we want, we're concerned with this line here. So this line represents this straight edge and whatever straight edge I do here. So uh, let's just use this as our new straight edge. So I'm gonna align my, I'm gonna put my, uh, with the right side down, this is the wrong side. I'm gonna align that folded edge with my straight edge, which is this, so, so they're parallel. And then I'm gonna cut my generous seam allowance. So again, I'm just gonna, well, we'll use the scissors here. I'm gonna, you know, my generous seam allowance, it has to be about here's plenty. Just making our blob. I mean, and this is how blobby you really can be. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so remember this, this was our straight edge and this is the right side. So if I'm putting right sides together, that is the straight edge and the right side. All right, so now when I fold it, it should cover that spot. So let's give that a test because now we're dealing with a goofy weird blob triangle. Um, those I wanna test, so let's flip it around with the edges together and let's do our pretend sewing. Again, I do like using two pins just so that there's like a couple points of contact there. Our fake pressing, our pretend press. There we go. And uh, did we cover our A5 piece plus our generous seam allowance? And it looks like we did. Oh, hello, Aaliyah, you're in Ohio. <laughs> that is different. <laughs> Welcome uh, to the show tonight. Um, all right, so we've covered our piece there just fine. I'm gonna leave those pins. Let's do the other one right away. I'll grab a couple more pins. I think I've placed this where it should go. Let's flip it around, grab two more pins. and uh, um, do our pretend sewing. That's awesome, Aaliyah. You're, in a, you're almost in our time zone now. <laughs> All right, and uh, our pretend press. Looks like we've definitely got our generous seam allowance around there, so we are good to sew. All right, let's get down over here. All right, so let's flip it around. And again, we're gonna sew into the seam allowance. Ooh, it's angled up this way. I'm gonna get those pins out of the way just so I can see the line a little bit better. Okay. This one's at a little bit of an angle. These aren't perfect rectangles. They're, some of them are a little bit angled. All right, let's go backwards a couple stitches. All right, and then forward again. Oops, a little bit more. There we go. And I think, yeah, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna lift it off, off the machine versus trying to chain piece this. All right, there we go. Snip these buggers off. Okay, and let's do the A piece as well. If you're working with a large kind of floppy piece, then you might want to leave the pins in, but with a piece this small, um, it's actually easier for me to not have the pins there. I know that this is going to stay together just fine. 
my edges here. All right. And back forward. All right, that is it for the paper piece sewing. Let's press these and then we can trim the edges um, so they're a nice perfect size. And after, after we've trimmed it, then we'll take the papers out. All right, there we are to the ironing board again, where of course all my tools end up again. All right, the printed side down. Let's finger press this and extend the fold or extend our sewn line. Okay. And looking cute. And same thing here. Okay, all of our pieces are on there. So now all we have to do is um, we have to trim these to size. So in the instructions, it says uh, to trim this shape, this shape that we did here, to two and a quarter by two and a half inches. And I suspect that that is the size of this inner line plus the seam allowance. I'm only guessing, so let's let's do a test. So what was the width? Two and a quarter. Yeah, so if I measure a quarter inch from this line and this line, yep, a quarter inch, that's two, yep, two and a quarter. And if I add a quarter to the top of that line and the bottom, then we are at two and a half. So that's that's what I suspected. So what we wanna do is see this line? That is the line we wanna measure everything off. I don't care about this uh, seam allowance that they put on, the designer put on for us. We're like, this is the, this part here with the lines, that's the part that has to be exact. Just how these, these lines were exact. So we wanna measure a quarter inch away from every single one of these sides and then trim. And then that is, uh, that is our, uh, that will uh, yield the size that uh, we were intending. Ooh, my little, uh, my little grippy guys are coming off. I'll have to get new ones on there. All right, so I'm taking the quarter inch mark and aligning it on here. So I'm not, I'm not using the add a quarter now just because that's mostly, you know, I don't, it's for that, that bump to be on a fold and I don't have a fold anymore. So I don't need like that goofy raised um, bit for this part. I just want to get a normal ruler and cut, cut on the quarter inch line there. All right, so this is still good here. Let's trim. You might see little slivers of paper come off. That is fine. That just means that I cut my paper a little bit too big, which is fine. I, I am unconcerned with that seam allowance that was built in. I'm making my own perfect seam allowance. All right, we're gonna trim all these bits off. It's gonna magically look so finished. I love this part. You know, just for good measure, you know, I am, I'm making sure that I'm in line on these edges too, just to make sure that I'm keeping square. Yeah, there all those rough edges go. Wait until I flip this over. You'll be just, it's just amazing how much cleaner and further along it looks like than like this, for example. I'll show you after this last cut. All right. All right, there is our finished piece. So let's, let's just compare. Oop, there we go. Look how clean and perfect that looks 
uh, compared compared to this right here. <laughs> so just that extra step of trimming the edges, all of a sudden we look like we have a totally perfect finished piece. It's kind of amazing. Uh, that's like the best part when all of a sudden you see like, Waha, I made this intricate thing and it looks like real and perfect. Um, so the next best part is when you take the papers out and then you get to see all the perfect seam allowances that you got from using that add a quarter ruler and the postcard. That, that I find really fun too. So, all right, let's... Get that guy out of the way. Let's trim this filler. All right, little shred of paper on there. Again, we're measuring from that inside line, a quarter inch out from there. Oh, Bonnie, that's awesome. Yeah, it, it, I tried a couple ways of foundation paper piecing. And once I started, I don't remember where I saw this way, uh, but once I started doing it like this with the postcard and, um, and, you know, even the add a quarter ruler, but even without that, just the postcard method where you fold and then trim it, like all of a sudden I got in the rhythm of doing it and it was, wasn't as confusing anymore. So that I'm, I'm happy with this this current method of doing it. All right, last cut. Okay, let's check this one out. And there we go, our A and B section. So again, if you're just popping in, we are making this, the Happy Willow, and these two sections are this tiny little piece up here and this tiny little one right there. <laughs> so I think next we're gonna make this this um like this green, white, green, white piece that gets sewn onto it. I believe that's the next step after after this. But we have to take the uh paper out of this first. I'm gonna get a little lower for you guys here. So we have, uh, since we did the, that smaller stitch length, our holes are closer together than when we normally sew. And every uh, time the needle punches into our paper, it's making like a little perforation mark. So this should be pretty easy, or uh, pretty easy to tear apart. Sometimes I like kind of stretching it on the diagonal. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I'm just gonna take this piece here, which seems like the easiest. And I'm gonna carefully pull that off. I'm not just I'm not just pulling really hard. I am, you know, taking the time to pull it off here. A lot of people um, have a a little tweezers that they use here, and I'd love to get one of those little tweezers with the tiny little arms on the end. I'll have to that'll have to go on my list because that would be good for picking out little pieces in foundation paper piecing. But see, now now that I have some fabric here, now I can kind of stretch on the diagonal and it'll start loosening, loosening some of these other little pieces. All right, so let's... You don't want to stretch it too much, but sometimes it helps loosen things up. So take your time. This, uh... Oh, but look! Revealed a perfect, perfect seam allowance. Love! Can't make more. You can't make better seam allowances than, than what you can with that add a quarter ruler and just this foundation paper piecing process. That's why it's so magical. It's like wow, you made that totally intricate thing, um, block, plus your seam allowances are perfect. How did you cut such a perfect piece and sew it together so perfectly? Uh, that's what I thought before I knew it was all foundation paper piecing. But there we go. There are all of our perfect seam allowances. Uh, which are lovely. All right, there is, uh, this is our B piece. So we're, we're gonna press this again, uh, just, you know, make sure it's extra flat, but let's let's get this piece out. Oh, you have t the Tula Pink ones. Um, that's right, she makes, she makes some of those, uh, those tweezers with the little ends on. I'll have to look into that. There we go. Source them up. 
yeah, she has some nice uh, hardware stuff. Uh, we'll check that out. Just trying to loosen some of these. There we go. Come on, there we go, a little piece. This would have been a piece that would be good for the tweezers, but all right, got it. There, so that is our second piece. Now it just is all like fabric again. <laughs> we took the foundation out of there. You end up with a mess, but that is out of there. And now it's just like a magic thing that we pieced perfectly. You saw my kits at Joann's. Oh, that's awesome. All right, I'm going to press these. I don't have my kits at Michael's yet. That I'm trying to get in contact with them, though. I would love to have them at Michael's. All right. There we go. Perfect. That's why I love foundation paper piecing. Every just everything just turns out perfect. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's move on. That that is actually it for the foundation paper piecing part of of this pattern. Um what we do now is um you know, I haven't cut any of this yet. I think I'm going to just cut as I go along uh just cuz I think that'll be just the easiest thing for me to do um, now that we're, we're started here. So let's see. Um, I need join two cream and two green one inch by three inch strips. So I need, I need to cut one inch by three inch strips, press and cut them into two one inch by two and a half inch. So okay, I just need to sew four of these strips together so they uh, are back and forth yet like that. Oh, yep, they're at they're at Target. So they're at Joann's and Target. Uh, someone mentioned today uh, that if you're at Target, they are uh, there. If you have a crafting area at Target, they're they're there. However, that also kind of means the kind of stationary area or like the art supplies or the school supplies. It's kind of if you ask if you ask someone who works there where the school supplies are, then you'll probably probably get to them. So that's where they are at Target. And I know Targets are totally remodeling and everything. And then at Joann's, they're in the embroidery section. And that is only if you have embroidery at your Joann's. They are not at every Joann's. Um, so if you have an expanded like embroidery section, not just the thread, but like a, the wall of embroidery, then, then that's, that's where you can find them there. We have a whole wall of them there, so you should you should be able to see that. So I have this little extra bit left, and I think this is going to be plenty for our three inches. Yeah, I'm just going to cut this in half, and we'll just be done with it. I'm not even going to use a ruler, I don't think. We'll just, uh, well, let's use a ruler. Freaked myself out. But yeah, I'm just doing about three inches. I suspect that we'll be trimming it down a little bit, so I'm not going to care if it's a little less. But I think we have ex actually exactly three inches. Um, we have heard of Lo Hobby Lobby, so they are not at Hobby Lobby either yet. Um, I'd love to, um, you know, I know a lot of people, um, you know, I want to be where you guys have access to them and, and not everyone has Targets and Joann's and stuff, so I do want to... I'm, I am looking into Target and Hobby, or not Target, um, Michael's and, and Hobby Lobby as well. They all have their ways of working and it, and uh, <laughs> it's, you gotta put in the time to contact them and stuff. So I'm, I'm working on, working on all of that. But yeah, if there are, other places you guys would like to see kits, you know, even at your, uh, if you have like a local quilt shop and that sort of thing, feel free to um, 
messaged me their information or, or whatever. Um, I'd love to know. I will, I will contact them. All right, so these need to be one inch wide. I'm just gonna go by my, by the lines on my mat here. That'll be a good enough way of doing it. One inch. And then, you know what? I think I'm gonna just trim the fold off and call it a day. Get it square. There we go. All right, we should have our four pieces. So these are not all the perfect length, but that's okay, because we're gonna be trimming it down. You know, so I'm, <laughs> I'm consciously not being perfect here, because I don't think we need to be. I'm gonna sew, uh, I'll sew these two together, and then these two, and then we'll sew uh, the matching. We'll sew it into the four. And from there, then I just need to trim an inch and another inch. So we have, we have excess. I think we're gonna be fine. All right, down here. I'm excited, we're gonna get this next little bit sewn. Another little part done on this. Actually, I think this was the edge I needed to sew on. Oh, I can get my, my leaders out again. We're normal sewing again. All right, and then down here. Oh yeah, and you mentioned a spotlight for, for Australia. I'll have to look in that as well. All right, you know what? This big piece is in my way. I'm just gonna trim it off. I don't, I don't need it there. There we go. All right, I need a leader. Ugh, here we go. I think this one we need that other side on. Get in there. Okay. There we go. And uh, let's press these. So we do have to press these first uh, before. Well, actually, you know what? We don't have to press them. I bet you we can. We'll we'll match up the next part, and then we'll we'll press it all at once. So let's let's just open this up. Just kind of finger press it, so it lays sort of flat. Open this up. All right, and then we need that crisscross or that like that um, trade off. So one, two, three, four. All right, we'll flip these sides together. All right, and let's sew just that one piece there, that one strip. All right, gotta grab my basket here and get another leader out. I threw the feet <laughs> of my table in there too, since uh, I took the feet off because my table here is perfectly level um, with my machine without the feet on. So I took them completely off. So I'm storing them with my little leader squares. My mom just started doing this too and, and she's got the most cute little half square triangles going. All right, now we are ready to press. So here we go. Uh, we got a little bit going here. It doesn't have to be perfect because remember, we're gonna trim out the pieces. We're gonna cross cut the pieces that we need. Oh, I didn't decide 100% of what I'm gonna do with that bland wall behind me in, in the office, but I do like the idea of getting some of those command um, 
hooks and then putting a curtain rod on and then uh, hanging up a quilt. I have a whole pile of quilts that I love that are just, um, all right, hold on a sec. We press this. I'm just looking at um, how they want these pressed. Weird, the diagram's kind of goofy. Um, but I think I'm going to do a, um, I'm going to put one of my quilts up there. So I have the octopus quilt from my book, and I also have a quilt that I made with every single embroidery, the elephant embroidery patterns. I think I might hang up one of those. Um, but I do like the idea of a quilt back there. It won't be in the way at all. I won't get it dirty or anything. All right, so they have pressing instructions here, but... Wait, up, down, up. Okay, the pressing instructions are a little goofy, but I think we got it. So I was thinking they'd go all in one direction, but they, they don't actually. So let's, let's, uh, let's do it what it has here. So this one goes up, this one goes down, and this one goes up. Oh, I see what we're doing. We're pressing it towards, towards the dark side. That's, that's what's going on here. Okay, that makes more sense. All right, so I'm just going to get my iron in the middle here. Ugh. I'm space limited right now. Maybe when triangle tango is is done, I don't want to I don't want to have a project that I'm working on um at the at the warehouse office there because I want it near me for when cuz I, I do these these Facebook lives at at home here. So I'd like my in progress stuff, like with the design board, I ordered one of those design boards. I'd like to do that here. So I won't have the triangle tango quilt there, but it could be when I'm done. So once I have something hung there, I'll do a little live and, and show you that. How about that? Okay, we did it. There we go. We pressed towards the dark side here. And uh, I am going to trim, trim the pieces that we need out of here now. So it should be, would love to see the embroidery one. I think, I think Terry, that might be the one that I hang up. It's, it's a quilt with um, just the seven inch squares with the embroidery, like the whole alphabet of my characters in, and then it has just some cute sashing around and a border. I think that's the one I might hang up. All right, let's trim this. So I need to cut one inch by two and a half inch pieces. So let's just first see if these are two and a half inches tall. And they are pretty close, which means my uh, quarter inch seam allowance is, is looking pretty good. So let's just get a nice edge on here. Yeah, it's maybe a little bit, I might be a little too shy with my scant quarter inch. That's good to know. All right, we'll trim that and I'm, I'm just gonna rotate it and I need to cut uh, two one inch bits out of here. All right, I'm just lining up that one inch so it's square. All right, there's one cute little darling strip and then one more and all this is going to be excess we didn't need any of that all right looks good all right that's that's why i wasn't too worried about cutting my strips the exact size because i was pretty sure we'd have a pile of extra here but now we have our perfect little strips again so I think you guys, I think we might actually end it there tonight. Uh, so these will get matched up. Make one strip set, cut two segments. We did that. Join, join a segment to the A and B units as shown. So these get sewn, this gets sewn to here and this gets sewn to here. Uh, I think we'll work on that tomorrow though, because I do want to make sure that all our points line up. So I'm gonna, sh I'm gonna, we'll go over how to do that. And it, look, I think my, this got a little bit bigger. This is a little bit smaller than the, 
two and a half inch maybe, and this is a little bit taller. This one maybe matches up a little bit better. <laughs> so I gotta work on my scant quarter inch. I think it's a little, little too scant because I have extra here. Uh, but we're gonna do our best to match up all these points. So we lose a quarter inch here and a quarter inch here. And once we do that, then, then this point will end up where this point does. It doesn't look like it's gonna match right now, but here, if you, if you think of sewing that quarter inch seam allowance, see, then, then they match up. So that is our goal uh, tomorrow is to match these up. I might put a pin in there just to uh, try and get those points perfect. And uh, we'll start there tomorrow. And uh, let's see what happens after that. Okay, so that's, that's next. And then sew one. Okay, make two. All right, it looks like then we're making Oops, sorry. It looks like we're then, after after this chunk, we're gonna be making these pieces here. And then we're gonna be making these pieces here with the little triangle. So it'll be like this, a, a long strip with a little triangle. And then with all our cut pieces, it looks like we just assemble everything after that. So tomorrow we'll, we'll, finish, we'll finish this up. I think we'll be able to make these and maybe even these and uh, hopefully even cut the rest of our pieces. And then probably on Thursday will be our final assembly of this. So that'd be pretty good if we if we were able to, oh no, on Friday, because tomorrow is Thursday. So we should be able to finish um, this by the end of day Friday is what I'm, what I'm uh, guesstimating here. So, all right, I'm gonna flip you guys around and we'll call it an evening. All right, hello again. So I'm pretty happy that we got that extra little bit done today. So we did some foundation paper piecing and that extra little, that's gonna be good once it's all matched up. There we go. It'll be more, more like that. Just the angled up and then across. So awesome. All right, you guys, we are ready to go for tomorrow. Uh, I'll get this up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies if you'd like to watch again. And yeah, tomorrow we'll work on getting those points to match up as best we can. We'll see how we do and work on the other bits as well. So have a great evening, everyone, and I'll see you tomorrow. Good night.